landslides and their controls. Objectives After attending this lesson, the user would be able to understand the nature and causative factors of landslides, their characteristics, classifications, triggering mechanisms and effects. The methods of controlling the effects of landslides and avoiding their menace are also highlighted. Disaster management methods are to be adopted to mitigate the never-ending natural hazards. This lesson is an important topic in disaster management. Introduction Geologists, engineers and other earth science professionals often rely on the unique and slightly differing definitions of landslides. This diversity in definitions reflects the complex nature of the disciplines that are associated with studying the landslide as a major phenomena. Landslide is a general term used to describe the downslope movement of soil, rock and organic materials under the effects of gravity and also the landform that results from such movement. Varying classifications of landslides are associated with specific mechanics of slope failure and the properties and characteristics of failure types. It is a major subject of study in disaster management. Natural Calamities Earth's natural calamities include earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, cyclones, floods and landslides. Whenever such natural hazards occur, there will be a severe loss to life and properties. Landslides are the regular natural hazards experienced in the hilly and mountainous areas all over the world. The occurrences of landslides have been recorded by many countries. Landslide is a general term used to describe the downslope movement of soil, rock and organic materials under the effects of gravity and also the landform that results from such movement. Varying classifications of landslides have been proposed in association with specific mechanics of slope failure, properties and characteristics of failure types. Understanding the landslides Hence, it is necessary to understand the following aspects of landslides. Landslides as natural hazards Causes of landslides Classification of landslides Landslides and other hazards Effects and evaluation of landslides Hill slopes Hills and mountains are typical geomorphic features. They are characterized by gentle or steep slopes. Sometimes they may have cliff-like vertical slopes. They are all called as hill slopes. Hill slopes are typical geomorphic conditions. They are unique climatic zones. They are characterized by thick soil profiles, richness with soil moisture and plant growth. Hill slopes have a good drainage of rainwater. The bedrock configurations are also very unique. The subsurface conditions of a hilly terrain may have two distinct zones as overburden and the basement rock. The overburden may be mostly loose soil, may have a thick weathered zone, adequate natural or man-made vegetation, good root penetration, and all are under the direct influence of climatic variations, especially rainfall. Landslides as natural hazards Landslides normally occur on hill slopes. When the slopes are stable, there will be no problem. When the slopes become unstable, then they may lead to landslides. Landslides occur when the stability of the slope changes from a stable to an unstable condition. The change in the stability of a slope may happen due to several factors. These factors may be acting alone or acting together. 
impacts of landslides occurrence of landslides also change the general landscape or the geomorphic conditions the topography and drainage get modified due to these hazards landslides can destroy the forests and other resources landslides will also damage the man-made structures like roads railways tunnels and buildings on the hilly regions the study of landslides helps in identifying the weak zones classifying the hill slopes into different categories and to minimize the impacts of landslides slope and bedrocks the bedrock is related to the basement rocks of the hill these may be massive or fresh structurally weak or deformed all of these may be under the influence of a tectonic force originating from the deep interior or a nearby huge structure like a dam the next factor is the degree of slope of the hills slope is the common factor for a landslide the categories of slope is to be understood first the term slope relates to the angle of inclination of the land surface it varies depending upon the geomorphic conditions bedrock nature of overburden vegetation and drainage systems categories of slopes the following are the categories of slopes cliff greater than 80 degrees precipitous 50 to 80 degrees very steep or steep 20 to 50 degrees moderate slope 6 to 20 degrees gentle slope 1 to 6 degrees flat terrain less than 1 degree classification of slopes there is an engineering classification of slopes as stable or unstable slopes the hill slopes may be stable or unstable the slope instability comes due to the relations between overburden and bedrock it also depends on the limiting angles which control the geomorphic process acting on it stable slopes are below the limiting angle for mass movement they are normally ranging from 38 to 40 degrees slope instability comes due to the geological geomorphological and hydrological conditions these include hill slope processes changes in vegetation land use practices human activities frequency and intensity of precipitation and local seismicity if any forces acting on slopes the forces acting on the slopes are of two fold as driving force or resisting force landslide occurs when the driving force is greater than the resisting force all happens under the influence of gravity the increase in driving forces weight of slope may happen due to adding water or adding structures the decrease in resisting forces may happen due to decrease in weight at the bottom of slope or over steepening or by removing the toe of slope or due to increase or due to decrease in the frictional energy or by adding water which may lubricate and reduces the strength of the rock natural causes of landslides landslides are caused due to several factors some may be natural and some may be human induced the natural causes of landslides include change in hydrologic conditions the groundwater or pore water pressure may be acting to destabilize the slope change in vegetation there will be loss or absence of vertical vegetative structure soil nutrients and soil structure due to forest fires or mining removal of surface mass the erosion of the toe of a slope by running river water or rain water snow melt weakening of a slope through saturation by snow melt glaciers melting or due to heavy rains seismically induced changes 
the occurrence of microseismic waves or tremors. This may also include earthquake-induced liquefaction, which may be destabilizing the slopes. Volcanic eruptions may also cause landslides. Geological factors The geological factors influencing landslides are continuous rainfall, heavy rainfall, slope beyond the limiting slope, soil type, thickness of soil profile, bulk density, permeability, and moisture. Soil flowage, increase in soil moisture. Plasticity index, Atterberg limit equals amount of water added to change a soil from plastic to liquid state of movement. Role of vegetation. Vegetation plays a dominant role in this hazard. It has both positive and negative impacts on the slopes. The factors influencing are density of vegetation, dense or sparse, type of vegetation, grass, plants or trees, canopy and weight, root penetration and its role in infiltration, age and life of vegetation, rejuvenation pattern of forests, Role of water. The overland flow of water plays a distinctive role. In fact, water plays the major role in the origin of landslides. The factors are heavy rainfall will induce more percolation, increase in the levels of saturation of subsurface soil horizons will induce forces, drainage patterns, stream frequency and density. When water infiltrates, a slippery phase is created above the bedrocks. Morphological causes. There are certain morphological causes for landslides. They are tectonic or volcanic uplift, glacial rebound, fluvial wave or glacial erosion of slope toe or lateral margins, subterranean erosion, solution piping. Deposition loading slope or its crest. Vegetation removal by fire, drought. Thawing. Freeze and thaw weathering. Shrink and swell weathering. Slides in low-lying areas. Although landslides are primarily associated with mountainous regions, they can also occur in areas of generally low relief. In low relief areas, Landslides occur as cut and fill failures, roadway and building excavations, river bluff failures, lateral spreading landslides, collapse of mine waste piles, especially coal, and a wide variety of slope failures associated with quarries and open pit mines. Human activities. Landslides are also caused due to human activities. The major human causes include deforestation and cultivation, disturbing the drainage patterns through cut and fill operations, construction, blasting, mining and quarrying, vibrations from machinery or heavy traffic and movement of heavy vehicles, earthwork which alters the shape of a slope and impose new loads on the existing slopes removal of deep-rooted vegetation, and bushfires for clearing trees. Classification of landslides Landslides are classified into various types based on nature of materials involved and type of movement involved. The type of movement describes the actual internal mechanics of how the landslide mass is displaced like fall, topple, slide, spread, or flow. Similarly, the material in a landslide mass may be either a rock or a soil or both. The soil is described as earth if mainly composed of sand-sized or finer particles and debris if it is composed of coarser fragments. Each type of movement can be further subdivided according to specific properties and characteristics. 
Based on the nature of materials involved, landslides are classified into rock slides, debris slides, and earth slides, and landslides. Based on the type of movement, landslides are classified into these types, falls, topples, slides, spreads, flows. Slides. Although many types of mass movements are included in the general term landslide, the more restrictive use of the term refers only to mass movements, where there is a distinct zone of weakness that separates the slide material from more stable underlying material. The two major types of slides are rotational slides and translational slides. Rotational slides. This is a slide in which the surface of rupture is curved concavely upward and the slide movement is roughly rotational about an axis that is parallel to the ground surface and transverse across the slide. The displaced mass may, under certain circumstances, move as a relatively coherent mass along the rupture surface with little internal deformation. The rock slump is a rotational slide. It is related to sliding of a mass of weak rock on a cylindrical or ellipsoidal rupture surface which is not structurally controlled. There will be little internal deformation. There may have a large main scarp and characteristic back-tilted bench at the head. They are usually slow events. Occurrence of Rotational Slides because rotational slides occur most frequently in homogeneous materials, they are the most common landslide occurring in fill materials. These are associated with slopes ranging from about 20 to 40 degrees. In soils, the surface of rupture generally has a depth to length ratio between 0 0.3 to 0 0.1. The velocity of travel or rate of movement are extremely slow, less than 0 0.3 meter or 1 foot every 5 years, to moderately fast, 1.5 meters or 5 feet per month, to rapid. Triggering Mechanism of Slides These triggered by intense and or sustained rainfall or rapid snow melt. Such events may lead to the saturation of slopes and increased groundwater levels within the mass. They are also caused due to rapid drops in river water level following flood events, groundwater levels rising as a result of filling reservoirs, or the rise in level of streams, lakes and rivers. All these activities can cause erosion at the base of slopes. These types of slides can also be earthquake induced. Effects of slides, direct, indirect. Rotational slides can be extremely damaging to structures, roads and lifelines. They are not usually life-threatening if movement is slow. Structures situated on the moving mass also can be severely damaged as the mass tilts and deforms. The large volume of material that is displaced is difficult to permanently stabilize. Such failures can dam rivers and lead to severe flooding. Mitigation measures. Instrumental monitoring to detect movement and the rate of movement is a major method to be implemented. The disrupted drainage pathways should be restored or re-engineered to prevent future water buildup in the slide mass. It is necessary to establish proper grading and engineering of slopes wherever possible. This will reduce the hazard considerably. Construction of retaining walls at the toe may be effective to slow or deflect the moving soil. Predictability of rotational slides. The historical slides can be reactivated at any time. So prediction is necessary. The distribution of cracks at the tops or heads of the slopes are good indicators of the initiation of failures. Mapping of such regions and controlling their triggers 
is necessary. Translational slides. In this type of slide, the landslide mass moves along a roughly planar surface with little rotation or backward tilting. A block slide is a translational slide in which the moving mass consists of a single unit or a few closely related units that move downslope as a relatively coherent mass. The translational rock slide is the sliding of a mass of rock on a planar rupture surface or a wedge of two planes with downslope oriented intersection. The rupture surface may be stepped. There will be no internal deformation. The slide head may be separating from the stable rock along a deep vertical tension crack. These are usually extremely rapid events. The material in the slide may range from loose, unconsolidated soils to extensive slabs of rock or both. Translational slides commonly fail along geologic discontinuities such as faults, joints, bedding surfaces or the contact between rock and soil. Occurrence of translational slides. One of the most common types of landslides occurring all over the world. They are found globally in all types of environments and conditions. Their movement is shallower than rotational slides. The surface of rupture has a distance to length ratio of less than 0.1 and can range from small residential lot size failures to very large regional landslides that are kilometers wide. Their movement may initially be slow, 5 feet per month or 1.5 meters per month, but many are moderate in velocity, 5 feet per day or 1.5 meters per day, to extremely rapid. With increased velocity, the landslide mass of translational failures may disintegrate and develop into a debris flow. Triggering mechanism and effects. These are triggered primarily due to intense rainfall, rise in groundwater within the slide due to rainfall, snowmelt, flooding or other inundation of water resulting from irrigation or leakage from pipes or human related disturbances such as undercutting. These types of landslides can also be induced by earthquakes or tremors. Translational slides may initially be slow, damaging property and or lifelines. In some cases, they can gain speed and become life-threatening. They also can dam rivers, causing severe flooding. Mitigation measures. These are to be controlled by adequate drainage systems. It is necessary to prevent sliding or, in the case of an existing failure, to prevent a reactivation of the movement. The other common corrective measures include leveling, proper grading and drainage, and construction of retaining walls. More sophisticated remedies in rock include anchors, bolts, and devils, which in all situations are best implemented by professionals. Translational slides on moderate to steep slopes are very difficult to stabilize permanently. These slides have high probability of occurring repetitively in areas where they have occurred in the past, including areas subject to frequent strong earthquakes. Widening cracks at the head or toe bulge may be an indicator of imminent failure. Rock collapse and soil slumps. Rock collapse are also sliding events of a rock mass on an irregular rupture surface consisting of a number of randomly oriented joints. Rotational soil slumps are sliding of a cohesive soil mass on a cylindrical or ellipsoidal rupture surface. They show little internal deformation. Debris slide is also a sliding of a landmass of granular material on a shallow planar surface parallel with the ground. Falls. Falls are abrupt movements 
of masses of geologic materials such as rocks and boulders that become detached from steep slopes or cliffs. Separation occurs along discontinuities such as fractures, joints and bedding planes and movement occurs by free fall, bouncing and rolling. Falls are strongly influenced by gravity, mechanical weathering and the presence of interstitial water. A fall begins with the detachment of soil or rock or both from a steep slope along a surface on which little or no shear displacement has occurred. Rock falls. Falls or abrupt downward movements of rock or earth or both. They get detached from steep slopes or cliffs. The falling material usually strikes the lower slope at angles less than the angle of the fall, causing a bouncing action. The falling mass may break on impact, may begin rolling on the steeper slopes and may continue to move until reaching a flat terrain. These are common worldwide on steep or vertical slopes. They are also seen in coastal areas and along rocky banks of rivers and streams. The volume of material in a fall can vary substantially from individual rocks or clumps of soil to massive blocks thousands of cubic meters in size. The velocity may be very rapid to extremely rapid. There may be free fall, bouncing and rolling action of the detached soil, rock and boulders. The rolling velocity depends on slope steepness. The triggering mechanism may be undercutting of slope by natural processes such as streams and rivers or differential weathering such as the freeze-thaw cycle, human activities such as excavation during road building and or maintenance and earthquake shaking or due to intense vibration by traffic. Effects of rock falls, direct, indirect. The falling material can be life-threatening. Rock falls can damage property beneath the fall line of large rocks. Boulders can bounce or roll great distances and damage structures or kill people. Damage to roads and railroads is particularly high. Rock falls can cause deaths in vehicles hit by rocks and can block highways and railroads. Corrective measures Mitigation of rock falls. These are controlled by constructing rock curtains or other slope covers, protective covers over the roadways, and by constructing retaining walls to prevent rolling or bouncing. The removal of mass in hazardous target areas, removal of rocks or other materials from highways and railroads can be used. Rock bolts or other similar types of anchoring may be used to stabilize the cliffs. Scaling may lessen the hazard. Warning signs are recommended in hazardous areas for public awareness. Stopping or parking under hazardous cliffs should be avoided. Predictability. Mapping of hazardous rockfall areas should be done. Rock bounds calculations and estimation methods for delineating the perimeter of rockfall zones are to be attempted. These lists of information should be widely published. The indicators of imminent rockfall include terrain with overhanging rock or fractured or jointed rock along steep slopes. They should be notified. The areas that are subjected to frequent freeze-thaw cycles may be affected regularly. Topples. A topple is the forward rotation out of a slope of a mass of soil or rock. It happens around a point or axis below the center of gravity of the displaced mass. Toppling is sometimes driven by gravity, exerted by the weight of material upslope from the displaced mass. Toppling failures are distinguished by the forward rotation of a unit or units about some pivotal point below or low in the unit under the actions of gravity 
and forces exerted by adjacent units or by fluids and cracks. These are known to occur globally. They are often prevalent in columnar jointed volcanic terrain as well as along stream and river courses where the banks are very steep. Their velocity of travel are extremely slow to extremely rapid, sometimes accelerating throughout the movement depending on the distance of travel. Triggering Mechanism of Topples Topples are sometimes driven by gravity exerted by material located upslope from the displaced mass and sometimes by water or ice occurring in cracks within the mass. The other reasons are the vibration, undercutting, differential weathering, excavation or stream erosion. The effects can be extremely destructive, especially when failure is sudden and or the velocity is rapid. Corrective Measures Mitigation In rocky terrains, there are many options for the stabilization of topple-prone areas. One approach is the reinforcement of these slopes include rock bolts and mechanical and other types of anchoring. Seepage is also a contributing factor to rock instability. Hence, the drainage should be considered and addressed as a corrective measure. Predictability of topples. Topples are not generally mapped for susceptibility, but some inventory of their occurrence should be done in certain areas. Monitoring of topple-prone areas is a useful method. The use of tilt meters is inevitable. Tilt meters are used to record changes in slope inclination near cracks and areas of greatest vertical movements. Warning systems based on movement measured by tilt meters could be effective methods of control. Flows. A flow is a spatially continuous movement in which the surfaces of shear are short-lived, closely spaced and usually not preserved. The component velocities in the displacing mass of a flow resemble those in a viscous liquid. Often, there is a gradation of change from slides to flows, depending on the water content, mobility and evolution of the movement. There are five basic categories of flows that differ from one another in fundamental ways. They are debris flows, debris avalanches, earth flows, mud flows and creeps. Debris flow. A debris flow is a form of rapid mass movement in which a combination of loose soil, rock, organic matter, air and water mobilize as a slurry that flows downslope. Debris flows include less than 50 degrees fine-grained mass. Debris flows are commonly caused by intense surface water flow due to heavy precipitation or rapid snowmelt that erodes and mobilizes loose soil or rock on steep slopes. Debris flows occur around the world and are prevalent in steep gullies and canyons. They can be intensified when occurring on slopes or in gullies that have been denuded of vegetation due to wildfires or forest logging. They are common in volcanic areas with weak soil. Lahars, volcanic debris flows. The word lahar is an Indonesian term. Lahars are also known as volcanic mud flows. These are flows that originate on the slopes of volcanoes and are a type of debris flow. A lahar mobilizes the loose accumulations of tephra, the airborne solids erupted from the volcano, and related debris. They are found in nearly all volcanic areas of the world. Lahars can be hundreds of square kilometers or miles in area and can become larger as they gain speed and accumulate debris as they travel downslope. They can be small in volume and affect limited areas of the volcano and then dissipate downslope. Debris avalanche. Debris avalanches are essentially large, extremely rapid 
often open slope flows formed when an unstable slope collapses and the resulting fragmented debris is rapidly transported away from the slope. In some cases, snow and ice will contribute to the movement if sufficient water is present and the flow may become a debris flow and or a lahar. They occur worldwide in steep terrain environments. They are also common on very steep volcanoes where they may follow drainage courses. There are large avalanches that have been known to transport material blocks as large as 3 kilometers in size, several kilometers from their source. Their velocity of travel may be rapid to extremely rapid. Debris avalanches can travel close to 100 meters per second. In general, the two types of debris avalanches are those that are cold and those that are hot. Effects of debris avalanches, direct, indirect. The debris avalanches may travel several kilometers before stopping or they may transform into more water-rich lahars or debris flows that travel many tens of kilometers further downstream. Such failures may inundate towns and villages and impair stream quality. They move very fast and thus may prove deadly because there is little chance for warning and response. It is necessary to avoid constructions in the valleys on volcanoes or steep mountain slopes. Real-time warning systems may help in lessening the damages. However, warning systems may prove difficult due to the speed at which debris avalanches occur. There may not be enough time after the initiation of the event for people to evacuate. Debris avalanches cannot be stopped or prevented by engineering means because the associated triggering mechanisms are not preventable. Earth flow Earth flows have a characteristic hourglass shape. The slope material liquefies and runs out, forming a bowl or depression at the head. The flow itself is elongate and usually occurs in fine-grained materials or clay-bearing rocks on moderate slopes and under saturated conditions. However, dry flows of granular material are also possible. Earth flows occur worldwide in regions underlain by fine-grained soil or very weathered bedrock. The flows can range from small events of 100 square meters in size to large events encompassing several square kilometers in area. Their velocity of travel may be slow to very rapid. Triggers and Effects of Earth Flows The triggers include saturation of soil due to prolonged or intense rainfall or snowmelt, sudden lowering of adjacent water surfaces causing rapid drawdown of the groundwater table, stream erosion at the bottom of a slope, excavation and construction activities, excessive loading on a slope, earthquakes or human-induced vibration. The effects may be rapid. They may run out for considerable distances, potentially resulting in human fatalities, destruction of buildings and linear infrastructure, and damming of rivers with resultant flooding upstream and water siltation problems downstream. Slower earth flows may damage properties and sever linear infrastructure. Grading of slopes and protecting the base of the slope from erosion or excavation is needed. Mud flow. A mud flow is an earth flow consisting of material that is wet enough to flow rapidly and that contains at least 50% sand, silt and clay-sized particles. In some instances, for example, in many newspaper reports, mud flows and debris flows are commonly referred to as mudslides. Creep. Creep is the informal name for a slow earth flow and consists of the imperceptibly slow, steady downward movement of slope-forming soil or rock. Movement is caused by internal shear stress, sufficient to cause deformation, but insufficient to cause failure. Generally, the three types of creep are 
seasonal, where movement is within the depth of soil affected by seasonal changes in soil moisture and temperature, continuous, where shear stress continuously exceeds the strength of the material, and progressive, where slopes are reaching the point of failure for other types of mass movements. Spreads Spreads are an extension of a cohesive soil or rock mass movement combined with the general subsidence of the fractured mass of cohesive material into softer underlying material. The spreads may result from liquefaction or flow and extrusion of the softer underlying material. The types of spreads include block spreads, liquefaction spreads and lateral spreads. Lateral spreads. Lateral spreads usually occur on very gentle slopes or essentially flat terrain, especially where a stronger upper layer of rock or soil undergoes extension and moves above an underlying softer, weaker layer. Such failures are normally accompanied by some general subsidence into the weaker underlying unit. In earth spreads, the upper stable layer extends along a weaker underlying unit that has flowed following liquefaction or plastic deformation. If the weaker unit is relatively thick, the overriding fractured blocks may subside into it, translate, rotate, disintegrate, liquefy or even flow. Velocity and triggers of spreads The spreads move slowly with moderate speed. Their movement may sometimes be rapid after certain triggering mechanisms, such as an earthquake, are activated. The ground may then slowly spread over time from a few millimeters per day to tens of square meters per day. The triggers for spreads may be the presence of a weak layer. Liquefaction of lower weak layer by earthquake shaking is a major trigger. Natural or anthropogenic overloading of the ground above an unstable slope is yet another reason. Saturation of underlying weaker layer due to precipitation, snow melt and groundwater changes may also induce spreads. Plastic deformation of unstable material at depth, for example salt, is another reason. Effects of spreads, direct, indirect. Spreads can cause extensive property damage to buildings, roads, railroads and lifelines. They can spread slowly or quickly depending on the extent of water saturation of the various soil layers. Lateral spreads may be a precursor to earth flows. Mitigation measures. Preparation of liquefaction potential maps is necessary. Areas with potentially liquefiable soils can be avoided as construction sites, particularly in regions that are known to experience frequent earthquakes. If high groundwater levels are involved, sites can be drained or other water diversion efforts can be added. Overall triggers of landslides Flooding Landslides are much related to the influence of water. Oversaturation of soil mass with water on the slope areas is a primary cause of landslides. This effect can occur in the form of intense rainfall, snow melt, changes in groundwater levels and water level changes along coastlines, earth dams and the banks of lakes, reservoirs canals and rivers. Landsliding and flooding are closely allied because both are related to precipitation, runoff and the saturation of ground by water. In addition, debris flows and mud flows usually occur in small, steep stream channels and often are mistaken for floods. In fact, these two events often occur simultaneously in the same area. Seismic activity. 
Landslides are also related to seismic activity. Many mountainous areas that are vulnerable to landslides have also experienced at least moderate rates of earthquake occurrence in recorded times. Volcanic activity Landslides are also related to volcanic activity. Landslides due to volcanic activity are some of the most devastating types. Volcanic lava may melt snow at a rapid rate, causing a deluge of rock, soil, ash and water that accelerates rapidly on the steep slopes of volcanoes, devastating anything in its path. Effects of landslides on the built environment Landslides affect man-made structures, whether they are directly on or near a landslide. Residential dwellings built on unstable slopes may experience partial damage to complete destruction as landslides destabilize or destroy foundations, walls, surrounding property and above ground and underground utilities. One of the greatest potential consequences from landslides is to the transportation industry and this commonly affects a large number of people all around the world. Effects of Landslides on the Natural Environment Landslides have effects on the natural environment. They affect the morphology of the Earth's surface, mountains and valley systems, both on the continents and beneath the oceans. The mountain and valley morphologies are most significantly affected by downslope movement of large landslide masses. The forests and grasslands that cover much of the continents and the native wildlife that exists on the Earth's surface and in its rivers, lakes and seas will be severely affected. Forest, grasslands and wildlife often are negatively affected by landslides. The forest and fish habitats are most easily damaged. Landslide Mitigation Methods How to reduce the effects of landslides is a major step in disaster management. Vulnerability to landslide hazards is a function of location, type of human activity, use and frequency of landslide events. The effects of landslides on people and structures can be lessened by total avoidance of landslide hazard areas or by restricting, prohibiting or imposing conditions on hazard zone activity. The hazard from landslides can be reduced by avoiding construction on steep slopes and existing landslides or by stabilizing the slopes. Technological tools for evaluation of landslides Mapping, remote sensing and monitoring are the major techniques for analyzing and evaluating the landslides. One of the guiding principles of geology is that the present is the key to the past and past will help us to know about the future. In evaluating the landslide hazards, the future slope failures could occur as a result of the same geologic, geomorphic and hydrologic situations that led to the past and are leading the present failures. Based on this assumption, it is possible to estimate the types, frequency of occurrence, extent and consequences of slope failures that may occur in the future. Monitoring is a must. Human-induced conditions such as changes in the natural topography or hydrologic conditions can create or increase an area's susceptibility to slope failure. Useful conclusions concerning increased probability of landsliding can be drawn by combining geological analyses with knowledge of short and long-term meteorological conditions. Map analysis. Map analysis is usually one of the first steps in a landslide investigation. Necessary maps include bedrock and surficial geology, topography, soils, and if available, geomorphology maps. Using knowledge of geologic materials and processes, a trained person can obtain a general idea of landslide susceptibility from such maps. Aerial surveys. 
Analysis of aerial photography is a quick and valuable technique for identifying landslides because it provides a three-dimensional overview of the terrain and indicates human activities as well as much geologic information to a trained person. In addition, the availability of many types of aerial imagery or satellite images makes serial reconnaissance very versatile and cost-effective. Field reconnaissance. Many of the more subtle signs of slope movement cannot be identified on maps or aerial photographs. Indeed, if an area is heavily forested or if it has been fully urbanized, even major features may not be evident. Furthermore, landslide features change over time on an active slide. Field reconnaissance is always mandatory to verify or detect landslide features. It is also needed to critically evaluate the potential instability of vulnerable slopes. It identifies the areas of past landslides by using field mapping and laboratory testing of terrain through the sampling of soil and rock. Geophysical studies. Geophysical techniques are suitable to determine some subsurface characteristics such as the depth to bedrock, stratigraphic layers, zones of saturation, and sometimes the groundwater table. They are also useful to determine texture, porosity, and degree of consolidation of subsurface materials and the geometry of the units involved. Conclusion In India, landslides occur frequently in the regions of Himalayas, Western Ghats, Eastern Ghats, and other hill ranges like Vindhyas. The vulnerability to landslide hazards is a function of a site's location, topography, geology, drainage, type of activity, and frequency of past landslides. The effects of landslides on people and structures can be lessened by total avoidance of landslide hazard areas or by restricting, prohibiting, or imposing conditions on hazard zone activity. The disaster management is an emerging subject of earth science. We have to minimize the impacts of natural hazards like landslides. Our ultimate aim is to protect the life and all properties. For proper understanding of their impacts and causative factors, the landslide hazard zonation maps are to be prepared. The knowledge of geology of the region is essential for mitigating the effects of landslides. The impacts of landslides can be minimized through several mitigation methods that are available.